You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the auction block All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for the Thursday edition of your bi-weekly options extravaganza known around the globe, even in Rwanda, I hear tell, as the option block. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever scintillating, at least we tend to think so around these parts, Options Insider Radio Network. A couple of quick things at the top. If you like what you hear, throw some stars or a comment or a like, whatever your platform lets you do. It does help all the legions of new people who are discovering the world of options uh, beat a path to our door. And of course, if you want more fun in your lives, and who doesn't? You don't want your broadcast week to end after ball views on Friday. You want more goodness in your life? Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. The place to go to learn more about all that fun. As I went outside of the studio, that's why I sound a little bit different today, listeners, not too far, right down the street to the SIBO Global Headquarters. Why would I do such a thing, listeners? Because I am joined right now for a rare in-person appearance by the flow master himself, Mr. Henry Schwartz, holding down the SIBO hot seat appropriately enough at the SIBO. Mr. Flowmaster. Welcome back to the show. Glad to see you have survived your global travels. I can now confirm in person he has no uh, dengue fever or anything else, listeners. He's looking pretty good over there. How are you doing, Mr. Flowmaster? You survived your trip to Chicago as well. I, I did. This trip to Chicago was easy. It's a beautiful day here. I'm, I'm happy to 
happy to be here in, the, in our global headquarters. And uh, I know most of the reason you come here is for the snacks, though, Mark. There is quite the impressive snack selection. You know, everyone's trying to go healthy in the modern era. And you do have that option there, but you also have all the old degenerate snacks there as well. So they're, they're firing on both cylinders on the SIBO snack front. I can't speak, though. I've never been there. I can't speak to the snack selection at St. Charles Wealth Management. Hopefully it's good. I hear they have a delicious gyros and lemonade place across the street because we are joined from there by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, how are things going? How's the snack scene at St. Charles Wealth? Well, I'm going to start up a side business. It's going to be called Health Foods Aren't Us. And uh, I'm going to walk around to carnivals. I'm going to gain about 120 pounds. I'm going to wear a red and white vertical striped suit. Step right up, step right up. We got chicken skin. We got anything that you can imagine uh, that is unhealthy. If it's if it's healthy, then we, then we don't have it. And then I, I might even start thinking about selling cigarettes with it, too. So I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to be unhealthy. There we go. I guess you got to do what you got to do to stand out in the crowd. And then we go to a place where I know the snack scene is dismal because it is the dark and stormy shores. I I guess they eat the occasional maybe lobster bite or something like that, whatever they can harvest from the sea when they're not battling the clam pirates for supremacy. Where we are joined once again by the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Gibanazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. How's the snack scene on the shores of Maine? Anything good? Um, well, we had uh, three days of clam pirates. He pulled out bags and bags of clams. Uh, I don't know what, like maybe 15 bushels <laughs> or something. Um, it was impressive haul. Uh, yeah, so that's what we got going there. Uh, but it's a, a sunny, breezy, 70 degrees and balmy, perfect August day in Maine. I don't believe you. It's the shores of Maine. We know they're always dark and stormy which is the perfect prelude to lead into a market. Is it dark and stormy? I guess we're going to find out, listeners, because it's time for the trading war. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everyone. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading out there and you know what, listeners, it's been an intriguing one. Of course, we're coming off uh, the big downgrade. I want to get everyone's thoughts on that in a second yesterday, which, of course, uh, sent the market into a bit, I wouldn't call it a tailspin, but a, a decent sell-off. And we saw vol popping, which was nice for someone who has a, a few VIX call flies in his back pocket. Was debating whether to take those off today. I ended up not doing so. Uh, so we'll see how that, uh, how that performs for me going forward. Because coming into the start of the show today, listeners, we were selling off. Markets were popping. VIX was threatening the 17 handle again. Now as we're coming into showtime, I'm hanging out here with the Flowmaster, and all is right with the markets again because everything is mostly green to slightly unch. The S&P kind of flat up slightly, but back to uh, the modest green area, not in the red, at least for right now. They didn't crush it that far this morning. Let's see, how far did we get in the old S&P? If my charting will go along with me. Um, looks like we got down to about 44 85 somewhere in that range so south of 4500 obviously we now have a rally to around 45 15 in that range so nice little 30 handle pop what's that amongst friends listeners out there of course that means all of our ball friends were popping now starting to come off a little bit vix when we kicked off the show was at about exactly a 16 handle it's up a little over two about 2.1 points from where it was on the monday show if you're wondering in between episodes it got up a little bit north of 17 right about 17 30 was the high. I believe it hit that yesterday. So we did get higher. We're looking frothier, looking a little bit less frothy now. We'll see if that can maintain today or if we're going to turn around and start selling off again. Uh, VVIX was back up to triple digits now as we're kicking off the show, coming in a little bit down to about a 95. Still frothy, still up seven points from where it was on the Monday show. Uh, VXX 2540, getting about two and a half points back. It was obviously higher earlier this morning as well. UVXY 1880 when we kicked off the show, up a little over two and a half points from the Monday show as well. So they can go up, listeners. It's just a rare phenomenon. Uh, SVIX also can go down, we have discovered finally. 2680 when we kicked off the show, down a little over three, about 3.1 points. Obviously was lower earlier in the session. UVIX back up over a four handle, four and a half. At this point, up eight tenths of a point. If this keeps up, they won't have to reverse split. The market will do it for them. And VOLQ at about a 19 and three quarters. Uh, threatening the 20 handle, was over it earlier this morning, now back below it, still up about two and a quarter points 
from where it was on the Monday show. Let's go around the horn the opposite of the way we started. Let's go out back to the uh, dark and stormy shores this time. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, what were your thoughts on the surprise announcement yesterday, the little bit of sell-off we saw, the vol pop, and then now what we're seeing today, sir? Um, you know, obviously it it was a surprise, but, I, you know, I, <laughs> you, I, you just have to kind of wonder about what guys in Washington, uh, they are disconnected from reality. I, it's all I can, I mean, the interest cost is going to be a trillion dollars a year that, I mean, even from 10 years ago, how I think, what is that up? Like 900 billion dollars. Like it's, a, it's, a, the numbers are absurd. Um, and the reality is Fitch is like, wait a minute. I, and I, I don't disagree with them. I mean, they probably could have thrown this down pretty much, but you know, I guess they did it to Obama. And now I'm thinking about it. It's about, they had the same argument they did before about trying to cut spending. You know, one, one guy wants a lot and the other party just agrees to like a lot, but not crazy. It's, it's a totally unsustainable. And they were right. It's, this is unsustainable. It's a terrible thing they're doing to pretty much everybody, but you know they're going to turn us into Greece at this rate. But I'm not going to be grumpy about it. Um, but although Biden does have the distinction now of being, I believe, the only executive, as in president or vice president, he's been downgraded twice <laughs> while he has held office. So uh, I guess every everybody has their own claim to fame. Um, but as of right now. Um, you know, we're pretty much back to where we were at the close yesterday. Things were a little, I'd say, a little sticky today. And I believe the market is waiting for Apple and Amazon to save it uh, with some good AI news and some good earnings. And we just ignore all the stuff that Uncle Sam is doing by spending our, I think we're on to our great-grandchildren's money now at this point. So, um, and both parties are to blame. They can't, nobody can say no anymore. It's, it's, uh, it's a rough, we got a rough road as far as the government goes. And I think they've been trying to inflate their way out of their problem at this point. So we'll see how, uh, you know, and at least in the short term, the market was like, okay, AI, everything is cool. We still have technology and growth. Um, but you know, I think ever since Thursday, when kind of this interest rate thing uh, sort of peaked, if we close here, VIX today, it will be our, uh, it will be the first day um, in five that we made a new, you know, made a, we we made a new low. We were having previous higher highs and we did have a higher high today for a while. So we'll see where we close right now. But at least from the get-go on Thursday when there was that kind of spooky news and rates started to spike, VIX has been up every day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or I'm sorry, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and for a while Thursday today, but pulling back. So, And always a, a pullback in VIX. If we close lower, it's generally a sign the liquidity providers, and I definitely had a lot of VIX calls. I did the same thing. Uh, I owned a lot of the 17s and I was up pretty decent money on them this morning. Um, and I have watched it all go back to what I paid for them. So, um, and I'll probably end up dumping a join bunch the of fun the club, today. sir. Huh? The join the fun <laughs> club. What fun is it? You catch I know. It? <laughs> so, and, and that's why I give myself mental stops and somehow I decided to ignore it because I thought this debt rating thing would be a little bit bigger deal, but. Maybe it's just the market's like, hey, nobody's going to change buying bonds. Uh, although I have to say, rates have gone higher pretty steadily for the, you know, if you look at TLT, it ain't it ain't looking a whole lot better. And that's really what's been kind of keeping me, you know, from closing those, uh, closing the VIX upside and actually closing quite a few SPY put spreads as well. So, um We'll see how it all shakes out. Uh, I'm curious to know the other uh, our other panelists' ideas, but I think I've talked enough. <laughs> Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll continue in that same order, sir. Same question for you. Uh, what were your thoughts on the bit of a surprise announcement yesterday, the, the market's reaction, and then the, uh, as probably expected these days, now uh, opposite reaction coming in today, sir? Well, I mean... 
for the downgrade, I hate to say I don't put too much into it, but these are the same people that said mortgage-backed securities were a good, high-quality investment. Am I right? Yeah, uh, is that you are correct? Yes, yes. That, you I, are I'll correct. put a little room shot in there for you. <laughs> Got it. So, I mean, <laughs> there's nothing. We have a lot of debt. And th- there's really nothing shocking about that. And I don't think, don't get, we deserve the downgrade. Don't get me wrong. But as a nation, we deserve it. But I can't say it's really that big of a surprise. And I am not convinced yesterday's uh, down day was based on that and that alone. I think it was just kind of like an excuse to sell something type of a thing. Because if it was really that dire and that bad, we've all been around long enough to where we've been through things that are that dire and that bad to where the market's going to go down a heck of a lot more than one and a half percent if something's that awful, that much of a surprise and that bad. Um, my opinion, it was just, a. I think it was more along the lines of profit taking as opposed to uh, it going down. I think that uh, kind of the real news is going to be today after the bell with uh, that fruit company reporting earnings. And they really are reporting earnings after the bell today, contrary to our, uh, the tomfoolery that Mark Longo likes to say uh, on the on the time of Apple earnings announcements. But um I think that that's going to be more of a market mover for better or for worse uh, than what this downgrade was, quite honestly. Now, the benefit right now to where we are is that I think we don't need to raise rates anymore. Now, the Fed disagreed with me the last meeting, and they might disagree with me going forward. uh, But um, unfortunately, they don't ask my opinion. I wish they would. Uh, I don't think we need to anymore because of the fact that we have pretty decent interest rates right now. And inflation appears, at least for now, to be uh, st- somewhat stable. And so it's for those reasons, I don't think we need to raise interest rates. And I think that's going to be more of a story than some a bunch of analysts saying that, oh, we're going to give it a downgrade uh, from where we are. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. In terms of the market itself, uh, yes, we have uh, the Apple earnings today. I think that's the big story of the day. Um, nothing's really lighting up my tape as of right now, uh, from, for anything, quite honestly. And I, I think we're kind of in a little bit of a wait and see mode on a macro level. We're in a wait and see mode to see how we actually react from yesterday's, uh, down day. Uh, I think the S and P is just kind of digesting the news, if you will, even though I don't really think it is much news, but I think it's digesting more of the news of a one and a half percent down day more so than anything. Uh, And I think uh, we're kind of waiting on uh, where Apple is right now uh, on from just the individual stock level. So that's what I'm seeing today. And um, I'm busy today after the close. I'm going to be watching TV. Uh, Guess what I'm watching. (laughs) So that's what I'm seeing right now. How funny is it that uh, you think and the market might agree with you that uh, the earnings from one company more important than the downgrade of an entire nation's debt, right? That's that's where we are, how big some of these companies have become. <laughs> Forget about the U.S. Uh, economy downgrade. Let's, let's look at these fruit company earnings because they're interesting. But you, you probably have a point there, Uncle Mike. Uh, intriguing stuff there as we keep on rolling back here to uh, the SIBO hot seat. Quite literally, the seat is quite warm that I am sitting in right now, listeners, where I'm joined to my left uh, by the Flowmaster. Mr. Flowmaster, same questions for you, sir. First off, your thoughts on the... I guess debatably surprised downgrade that we saw yesterday, the market's decent but not apocalyptic response, and then now the fact that we seem to be already over the hump today. Well, I agree. Actually, I was lucky enough last night to go to a dinner with with an economist uh, who... Oh, you're very lucky. Dinner with an economist. That sounds fascinating. It it was fun. (laughs) I was just thinking uh, the other day how I wanted to go to dinner (laughs) with an economist. (laughs) The, but of course, one of the questions that the some of the people that were at this dinner were asking was like, "Does this is this an event or not?" And he said, "It's really not an event in terms of the downgrade." Um, he did have some concerns about the level of debt, and and I guess basically the the forecast over the next uh, I think out to twenty twenty five facet. But you, you know, we all talked about a lot of other geographies, Europe and uh, and China, and uh, you know, his general view was that. The U.S. may have some head, but it's still in better shape than everywhere else. So, and I think that that's kind of the, the vibe you get. Yeah, VIX, fine. VIX was up 15%, but it was up from 13 to 
to 15. I mean, we've all seen, you know, Vixen pop 10 points when people really get nervous and we did not see that. You know, the other thing was, you know, within the fact that we were down, you know, almost a, a percent and a half in the, you know, in SPX and, and, and NASDAQ was down even a little bit more, there were still a lot of pockets of names that were that were up, you know. So what you still see are these, you know, basically it's a little bit like, you know, the the meme stock deja vu. We're seeing some $3, $4 stocks really get bid. And, you know, to me, that's, you know, shows you that there's not a lot of fear. I mean, those names, everybody knows if, if, if the shit really hits the fan, these names that, are, you know, have, have quadrupled in three weeks will go right back down to 50 cents. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be any real fear out there of, of that happening. So, you know, to me, that's what I've kind of been watching. I mean, I mean, we we had a very strong July. So to sell off a percent or two, you know, it just kind of feels like a, a little bit of a healthy, um, you know, as, as the markets can go down. <laughs> yes, it is possible. Not just green. Uh, aside from the downgrade and all that kerfuffle, anything else catching your eye out there as you're analyzing all the flow now that you're back into it, sir, from your uh, extended respite in Rwanda? Uh, no, as I said, just kind of looking for some of these these uh, little speculative pockets and trying to kind of, you know, surf those, whether it's with, a, you know, a quick scalp in stock or, you know, or playing some of the options. So, uh, you know, as as we talked about last last week, Tupperware still is is providing some entertainment value, and <laughs> and I still have some. So, uh, you know, I've basically just been trying to pick my spots. Picking your spots in Tupperware. What is this? Twenty twenty one, sir. Are we all back in in the meme palooza? Yeah, that should be a good question of the week. Maybe next week. Is the meme stock frenzy back? Yes or no or other? And we'll decide what a fun other would be for that. As we keep on rolling out into the rest of the market, listeners, you know, VIX was kind of languishing, wasn't doing a heck of a lot. And then it seems like this whipsaw kicked it into higher gear. Now we are back north of our ADV, which is also back up from where it was on Monday. Roughly 50,000 contracts is right around 731,000. So that's certainly respectable for August. August seasonally, not usually the most robust period for VIX options. And today we're already north of that, 760. So Something is afoot out there today. I guess everyone else is out there unwinding their VIX up six of the Rock Lobster. And I SPY, four and a half million. Uh, the ADV, a little over seven, about 7.15 million right now. SPY is pretty much usually always in that range right about this portion of the show. So not a heck of a lot of surprise there. S, similar deal. It's about 1.66 million right now. Usually somewhere around one and three quarters million. That's kind of what we expect now. A year ago, this would have been banger volume. Now it's just kind of expected. Uh, the ADV, 2.63 million out there. It's looking a little bit frothier out in the S-land, at least from an, an ADV perspective. Small caps, 481,000 contracts on the tape. So we bit north of the halfway to their ADV, which is about 867. That has come in a bit. Obviously, it was north of a million not too long ago. And the Q's closing in on 2 million contracts right now, 1.93 million. The ADV, about three and a quarter out there. So that, uh, that ADV looking pretty robust, and they seem like they're on pace to hit that as well. Is it a banger day for single names? I mean, we are still in earnings season, listeners. So the answer is kind of. It's a decent day. We're at about 220,000 contracts. At least we were a few minutes ago. I'm sure if I re rack this now, might be a little bit higher. But either way, we are, we are not threatening the 300K level, which is usually our barometer for a, a pretty robust single name day. And of course, it wouldn't be a top 10 if we didn't kick things off with our old friend, the artist formerly known as Facebook, and now Meta Platforms, Inc. This rolls off the tongue, listeners. A uh, 315 right now, up about two thirds of a buck out there today. It's had an interesting range, a little bit shy of 310, and the upside almost 316. So, a little over six dollar range on the day, settling out near the upside of that right now, listeners. So, they're, they're getting back some of their mojo out there. And Meta, good for 220,000 contracts. Number nine, speaking of the return of 2021. It's AMC. I went to an AMC movie last night. I haven't done that in a while. So uh, I should have bought a share so I could have got my free popcorn, Mr. Flowmaster. You know, I'm not down with all the deals out there. $4.90 right now, up about a dime today. So not a good day today. Their range is only about a quarter out there today. So pretty tepid compared to what we've seen for AMC in the past. Still good enough for the number nine spot and 235,000 contracts on the tape. Number eight, Shopify. Another one has had an intriguing run of late. Given some of that back right now, off a little over three bucks, trading 59 and about a third, roughly 5% off today. Hit as high as 64 and a quarter uh, earlier today. So their earnings were popping things. And then now looks like uh, 
giving up that ghost a wee bit out there. Again, good for 274,000 contracts and the number eight spot. A number seven, going back to China, listeners, it's Neo. They've been, they were, I should say, really a, a perennial top tenor for quite some time. Then they fell off for a lot of the early part of this year. Now the last month and change, they've been back 15 and about two-thirds, up a little over a buck today. If we look back on the week, it's been a decent week, up nearly two bucks and nearly 13% on the week. So a decent little run here for Neo and the number seven spot, 343,000 contracts. Number six, PayPal. You can tell it's earnings season with some of these uh, more esoteric names making their way into the top 10 today. We've got PayPal, 65.15, off a little over eight bucks. So <laughs> market not liking what they announced this morning, off nearly 11% today. So that's not a uh, not exactly a banger day for them. Their 52-week low listeners is right around $59. So they keep up on this pace. They'll be threatening that pretty soon. So apparently... All is not right in the world of PayPal. Number six, 517,000 contracts. Number five, though, you know what is right, listeners? It's AI. People cannot get enough of AI, as witnessed by NVIDIA. Number five, 675,000 contracts on the tape today, up nearly seven handles. They're one and a half percent. So this thing just getting back everything it lost yesterday and probably then some. The low today was actually 438. So from that, it's up a one and a half handle. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this thing, they cannot keep a good AI name down, apparently, listeners today. NVIDIA, Exhibit A, 675,000 contracts, and the number five spot. Number four, yes, number four, the aforementioned fruit company, hanging out right around 192, even off about a little over half a buck today. Looks like earlier in the day, they beat it down to about 190.69, so it has rallied from that low. Still not quite up on the day. As uh, Uncle Mike alluded to, everyone's kind of waiting for the news after the bell today for Apple, 683,000 contracts. And the number four spot. Number three, keeping it in the A tech names, we've got the Amazonians, 692,000 contracts. Uh, they're trading 129 and about a half, up about a buck, about almost a buck 40 on the day. Uh, so about a little over 1%. They crushed them down to about 126.41 earlier this morning. So from that low, they're up about a little over three bucks. So an intriguing little rebound for Amazon, and again, good for the number three spot. 692,000 contracts out there. Number two listeners, still keeping it in A, tech-related names. It's the other half of our chip zone, so NVIDIA and AMD flipping today uh, because uh, they had their earnings announcement. AMD looks like a little bit of a banger today as well. 114.90 is where they're trading right now, up about five and a half bucks, or a little over 5% today, so... Market liking what they're putting down, giving them the number two spot, 759,000 contracts. And, you know, it takes a lot to dethrone the king, Yes, and no one's doing that today, listeners. It's Tesla, the number one spot, 1.14 million. So still outpacing all these other names out there, up a little over four, about 420 today. Uh, They hit a low of 252 even, so they're up pretty much exactly six bucks from that low, trading 257.99 right now. So uh, intriguing stuff out there. For Tesla and the single name front. In terms of the rest of the list, obviously we still are in it from an earnings perspective. We had a lot of things popping off this week, not just the ones I mentioned. We had SoFi on Monday, Tuesday we had Uber, Pfizer, EA, Match Group, so all of your all of your online love covered there. A Caterpillar and JetBlue and AMD. Today, or excuse me, Wednesday, we had CVS, we had PayPal, Shopify, we just talked about them, Qualcomm, WWE, never heard of them. And uh, Robin Hood and Papa John's. And today, of course, Expedia, Moderna, Hasbro, Amazon, and Apple. Oh, and throw Coinbase in there as well, listeners. Uh, Airbnb and DraftKings. And, oh, Portillo's. A little bit of Italian beef vol going on out there today. So a lot to pay attention to. Uh, we're keeping an eye on. As soon as we have our updated earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season ports, we will let you folks know, listeners, right now, coming into today, the number for the season. Remember I told you it was going to come down from that Pretty lofty 150%, and it has. It's down to about 117% right now. Uh, Our long-term average, 98%, so still looking fairly robust, all things considered. But you know what's always robust, listeners? It's a live, in-person version of the Odd Block. So let's get to it. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, buddy. Welcome.
welcome to the Odd Wops, of course, on the show where we get weird, we get wild, we get a little whimsical. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show where we get weird, we get wild, we get a little whimsical out there. And it's always fun to do these in person with the Flowmaster out there because I get to see the gears turning over there next to us. And he's been frantically typing away at his keyboard, listeners, scanning and running the Eye of Sauron over and over again just to find some goodies for you folks out there. Mr. Flowmaster, I can see the wheels turning which name have you alighted upon for our listeners first today, sir? Uh, well, I do have a few today. Uh, they're, they're probably not as crazy speculative uh, as, as we kind of usually look for. That's it, I'm out. Yeah, well, you know, can always be <laughs> nuts, though. Uh, the, one of the biggest trades I saw today is a big put spread in, a, in the Jets ETF. This is an ETF that holds uh, a bunch of airlines, and I think it has some travel logistics companies in it, too. And we saw a put spread seller about 34,000 times. A nice symmetrical put spread. The SEP 2021 put spread uh, sold for 49 cents. And uh, we know that based on the fact that uh, the, the print is clear. Also, I have a floor show confirming it. And it was about two cents below the theoretical value, which I can see in trade alert. Uh, but what I can, what's interesting is, is I can dig into the history and see that the 21 was is a closing sale. So what they're doing is rolling down a protective put position or possibly just a bearish bet on, on airlines. Uh, we did get a little bit of a sell-off uh, in in that sector uh, in the last couple of days. Um, so that's kind of an interesting one. Um, you know, I don't know if I would really take any action on it. Uh, I'm long a couple of airlines and they're, they're you know, they've, most of them have never come back from where they were pre COVID. Um, another one that, um, before we do that, let's, let's, let's spread them out a little bit. We'll not give them all the goodies at once. Of course, ticker symbol jets listeners, J E T S trading like 20 and a quarter right now, a decent year up a little over two bucks on the year. Uh, they did hit, did hit it down to sub-15, 14 and three quarters. Looks like that came back in October of last year. Uh, since then, it has mostly straight up. They rallied it back up to about 22 bucks just a couple of weeks ago, as the Flowmaster alluded to. Since then, the last week and change, looks like it has sold off almost two bucks out there. Hence, hence the rolling of our put spread out here today from the 21 strike down to the 20 strike. But they're keeping it alive. They're not taking it all off. They're not rolling out another month or keeping it all in the September expiration cycle. Uh, so that is intriguing. Mr. Mister Rock Lobster, we have discussed jets in the past. It's been a little while. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on jets and this rolling of this September put spread down to the 20 strikes? Um, I have to say, when I look at the... Like... <sighs> I, f- I find the paper h- the hardest to follow in the ETFs, like the big paper. Uh, I find that more challenging. Um, I have to say, though, like I the the airline business looked like it was a good business, and then COVID wrecked it, and it hasn't been quite the same. Even though apparently people are flying, but the complaints seem pretty heavy. So, I mean, I can see. Uh, I can see why somebody would have this trade. Um, the only thing I can't see is uh, if is do they is it a roll down and are they taking profits? I just I missed that part from Henry, but um, but yeah, we've actually we have seen some bearish like an AAL and stuff. We have seen some bearish uh, individual name paper in there um, lately. I would say as well. Well, let's get out. I'm glad you, this next one, Mr. Flowmaster, I'm glad it's you and not me because I have kind of washed my hands of this name. <laughs> I came to the realization about six months ago that you could literally do a show every day on this name. The amount of ridiculous paper that goes out out there that I kind of, I kind of looked aside on. What name am I talking about? I think you probably know if you've been listening for a while. Certainly if you're on the pro side and listen to oddities, you know uh, the Rock Lobster and I kind of stepped back from this one. It is charge points. It is just... One of the kings of just redonkulous paper out there. A rough year for ChargePoint. A year ago was trading north of 15 bucks. It's pretty much been cut in half. It's off 48% on the year. Uh, trading $8.20 right now, listeners. They did get it up ever so briefly uh, on the year to about almost 20 bucks. That came, looks like, in the near late September, early October time frame. Then ever since, it has been just selling off like crazy and looks like it has rebounded from its its low for the year which was about seven and a quarter looks like that came back in june of this year so it's up about a buck from that low 
in June. So I suppose if you want to be a glass half full kind of person over the last month, it's done all right. It's up about a buck. But net on the year, still just uh, ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, Mr. Flowmaster, uh, I charge you to analyze the flow in this name because I have washed my hands of it. It is so ridiculous. You see so much size. My determination is that someone who trades ChargePoint really likes their broker. And they just want to sling size literally every day to do a whole heck of a lot of nothing. But maybe you found some intriguing nuggets. I want to see, Mr. What'd you dig up today? Well, th- this so this traded yesterday, but the reason I noticed it today is because I saw it, it led the open interest changes. So yesterday, uh, with stock around uh, 8 bucks, 177,000 calls traded. First, 11,000 puts. So... Uh, very heavy call day, and it, basically what we saw was 70,000 of the September 1st nine calls bought in a roll from some nine strike calls that expired August 11th and August uh, 18th as well. So, you know, exactly as you said, there's there's certainly somebody with deep pockets that that likes to play in this name. <laughs> um, and, you know, given that kind of, you know, we're seeing, I wouldn't say we're seeing a super volatile market right now, but there are certainly, uh, you know, as I said, there's there's plenty of names that are moving 20 or 30 percent a day uh, when you kind of get down into the, you know, uh, some of the thinner names. And maybe that's what they're looking for. Um, I, I think that looking at the trade history on the the ones that they sold out of, I don't think they made any money on them. Um, you know, stock did go from eight to nine. Uh, but it doesn't look to, it looks to me like they paid about 50 cents for those calls and they dumped them out for a quarter yesterday in the roll. So, um, not making any money, but, uh, but kind of keeping at it, which I respect. See, they love their broker. They're just treading water to generate commissions for their broker. Do you agree with me that a lot of this paper is, shall we say, <laughs> ridiculous? I mean, look at this name. Uh, it's not an Apple. It's not a Tesla. Yet everything is going up 70,000, 100,000 at a clip. Because obviously a couple of funds have the bit in their teeth about this name, and they are not shy about slinging paper. You have size synthetics, size roll, size in the money paper. This is probably one of the more clear-cut trades I've seen go up out here in some time. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, I know we have washed our hands of charge points, uh, but what are your thoughts on yet another sizable trade going up in this uh, somewhat head scratching name, sir? <laughs> uh, rolled from a shorter date. I, <clears throat> so I keep thinking whoever's buying these calls keeps saying to himself, I know those green stimulus dollars are going to have a charging station near you at some point, anytime soon. Uh, I keep like, cause this stock, I, I, all, that's all I can think is like, when's, when's the 10 billion getting kicked down for charge point to set up stations across the country or whatever. Um, and also in lieu of that Tesla basically is the standard now, right? Everybody just gave up and said, okay, we're just going to do what Elon does. So <laughs> I'm, Again, the most head scratching paper, and I am still looking for a company maybe besides Tesla to make enormous profits in green energy. I guess First Solar does pretty well, um, but uh, like the the dough is still, I don't know, it's it's just not there yet. <laughs> so this this is head scratching paper, and I don't get it. I and I'm still trying to see if any of these call buyers. Have ever made money in this thing, and I, I can't remember if they have or not. To be quite honest, so I think we all just want to buy stock. We all want to buy stock in the broker that's handling all this charge point paper because they're they're the only ones making money. I don't know if anybody else is making money yet out here. But so, the amount of size that goes up in this name, uh, spreads that are just head scratching, is is really just bizarre. And hence the name of the segment, listeners. It does belong in the odd block at the end of the day. So I'm glad the the flow master can can draw our attention back to that as we keep on rolling. This looks like Mr. Flowmaster, another name coming across your radar today. Another one we haven't talked about in a little bit. Good old Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol J&J listeners, obviously up about half a buck today, trading right around 170 and a half. On a year, it's been a little bit more topsy-turvy. They are net down a little over four bucks or about almost two and a half percent on the year right now. They actually got up, looks like, to about... 181. That seems like that was back in the late December, early January time frame. So since then, a year to date has not been great. They actually crushed it earlier in the year, back in the March, April time frame, down to their low for the year of about 150, almost even. So I guess from that perspective, you look at it post March, 
Uh, they're up about 20 handles, so it's a banger year. But net on the year, uh, they're still down. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what's what caught your eye out there in J&J today, sir? So, so, so this is one that I'm involved in. I do have a trade on. So Johnny John has a, a tender offer where they're splitting off a company called KVU, K-V-U-E. And so if you look at the option volume, it basically spikes starting around July 20th uh, from you know barely 30 or 40,000 contracts a day, 50,000 to a couple hundred thousand contracts a day. And that's continuing. And it's it's a little bit esoteric, but there actually is an opportunity for uh, retail or small traders uh, in that, that you have to read the, you have to do your homework on this, but basically you tender your Johnny John stock around the middle of this month, pay attention to the deadlines, and you're going to get back KVU stock at a 7% discount. So what we see, and this happens, something very similar traded in 3M last year uh, when they were spinning off of animal health company. But so, the, but the 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 reason that you see these giant revcons trade, right, which is basically just an option combo against stock, is because the institutional traders want to get tons and tons of stock to tender to try to get this seven percent discount, and and because there's a cap and there's a proration of how much stock Johnny John will actually accept, they do it. It's a little bit like the dividend trade; they do it huge, like you know, millions of shares, but. There's a loophole, and this is public, and as I said, do the homework. There's something called a 99-lot, uh, odd-lot tender exception, which is if you buy 99 shares, only 99 shares, and you tender it, you go to the front of the list. So what you end up ha- what happens in these situations is a lot of retail traders buy 99 shares of stock. Now, it's, you know, it's a $170 stock, so it's not, it's not a low-dollar stock, but what you get back is effectively um, – the spinoff stock at a 7% discount. So then it becomes a game of uh, how much is that stock going to tank on the day that they uh, that they deliver it. But you can hedge that with options. And so basically the trade is, is to buy the Johnny John and tender it and then pre-hedge your K-view and do as much research as you can on this because it's not – uh, it's not a risk-free arbitrage. Uh, trying to figure out exactly kind of how to hedge it and how the timing works can be a little bit tricky. Uh, but it is, it's is—it's going to result in heavy volume for the next week or so. I think the, I think the deadline is August 15th uh, in both Johnny John and KVU because basically the big guys buy a, a ton of stock in the form of Revcons in Johnny John. And then they do the opposite in KVU, and they they try to t- they try to basically calculate how much they're going to get through and end up with a, a minimal resulting position. Now in the in the three M spinoff, the target stock that they delivered did take a hit, and it took about six months uh, to break even if you hadn't hedged it. But if you did hedge it at the time, uh, you know you you more or less are able to kind of capture that. Uh, the discount. And that's 99 shares total. So you can't go out and buy multiple you can't buy. 99 lots. Correct. You can buy it in different accounts. So um, some people buy you know, 99 in their 401k and 99 in their main brokerage account and 99 in their kids account. And then you have to be very careful about what the deadline is for the tender, but the brokers know about this. So like if you happen to buy it on, um, you know, on Fidelity, when you, if you go searching for tender, they'll actually send you an email saying you have a stock that is subject to tender. Click here to tender it. All right, Mr. Flowmass. And since we're hanging out here live, let's do one more here in the odd block because it's always fun to do some live odd block. I see you noticed one that came across our radar today as well. Uh, we're going out to Expedia Group listeners, ticker symbol EXPE, and they are coming for this one today, listeners, trading $99.60. Off about eighteen dollars and forty cents today, or nearly sixteen percent. So clearly they had earnings, and clearly the market not liking what they're putting down out there, listeners. If we go back a little bit, uh, they're still off after today's sell-off. They're back. They were up. Now they're down six dollars on the year, about six percent. Uh, so intriguing stuff. Their actual low for the year came at about eighty-two bucks. Looks like that was back in the right early January, late December time frame. So. Uh, they have rallied from there, of course, if this uh, trend keeps up. Uh, perhaps not so much, but Mr. Flowmaster, it seems like, and you noticed this as well, somebody may be thinking we got a little bit of a of a rebound coming. <laughs> Looks like they're wearing it right now, but we shall see. We saw 5,261 of the AUG expiring tomorrow, listeners. 103s, yes, 103s. We're hanging out at 99 and change right now. 
They went up for 53.6 cents. So this is obviously in the immediate post earnings, things go crazy, listeners. Someone paid uh, nearly a dime through the offer to get these calls done. Uh, the stock was right around here in 99 and change. So they have a little bit of move to the upside in the calls, I suppose. But I don't know. It's going to take a little bit to get to get that money back. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what are your thoughts on someone swinging for the fences tomorrow in Expedia? Uh, well, it, it is an interesting one. I, I mean, I think this stock, the incoming, the uh, expected move was around 7%, and it's down about double that. So uh, this is kind of a, a, you know, blew the doors off in terms of magnitude of the move. And I, I agree, it looks like somebody was willing to, uh, you know, to take, uh, you know, almost a quarter million dollars on a, on a sh- very short-term rebound bet. Uh, it's a tricky one. That, that decay is going to be happening awfully fast. <laughs> it's happening already. They can feel the pain. So you know, maybe maybe they're looking for you know kind of a, a big spike into the end of the day. Uh, but you're right, stocks up a little bit from where they bought the calls, but the calls have not really budged. Um, yeah. You know, because they're gonna they're gonna be fighting time decay. Uh, not much time to fight. Yes, one day left. So we'll know. Maybe we'll we'll finish them off on oddities tomorrow, listeners. See how they do. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, any thoughts here on this Expedia kind of roll for the upside fences or the uh, very detailed tender offer deal that the Flowmaster put down in Jay and Jason? Um, I, I wish I could have. Uh, um, I wish I could have gotten more into that. I just didn't have any time because we saw a ton of uh, conversion paper and stuff in there. And I love watching. Looking at those things, I just I didn't have any time for it. Um, so interesting. I'm glad that Henry uh, uh, dove into it. Uh, as far as the Expedia goes, I'm just looking at these 103 calls. Uh, August 04 EXPE. Interesting. You know, um, I, I guess they're trying to do what a little buy in the dip day. I have to say, there's been a couple stocks like Generac and and Raytheon and uh, Scott's Miracle Grow that have just gotten taken to the woodshed lately. And I guess Expedia is joining the group. I, you know, I think the options are. I think it's a it's a bold purchase given how you know the stock kind of sold off. But um, I'm just trying to see if they're up on this on this trade currently because it doesn't look too far out of the money. Um, Let's see here. 04, what are these? The pars. Um, yeah, they're the 103s for 53 cents. So they're down a little bit today on. They're down a little bit on. So, you know, that's not our best smell test. But I think that's bold with one day to go uh, as an opening trade in a stock that's gotten smear, smeared like this. Maybe, maybe they think they're going to get the Apple Halo lift on it. That definitely gets the bold tag. They should have a trade tag. Bold. <laughs> this one gets bold, maybe crazy. Pick your poison. You know it's always bold and only sometimes crazy, listeners. It's your mail, so let's get to it. A little bit of the old mail block. It's time to take your seat on the All Star Panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody, welcome to the Mail Block, the portion of the show where you folks take the range, your questions, your comments. I know everyone out there is just waiting with bated breath for what Uncle Mike has to say about our VXX question of the week, our question of the week this week, listeners. Uh, VXX, I think to put it mildly, had a rocky year last year. Are you trading it again or have you moved on? Gave you four different flavors, two yes, two no. Yes, I never stopped trading it. Or yes, I'm trading it, but because they lured me back in, the stock's doing, the ETF's doing what I wanted it to do again. No, I don't trust it anymore. Or no, I trade other products. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you, sir. I know you don't really sling a lot of VXX, but if you have a vote, have at it. And then more importantly, what do you think our audience is up to, sir? Oh, hold on. I got to close out a bunch of VXX here real quick. Oh, Uh, look at you. (laughs) Degenerate VXX slinger that you are. No, that would be a bold face lie. <laughs> oh, Henry's fading your VXX trading set. Oh wow. boy, <laughs> that would probably be a smart thing to do if, if I'm messing with the VXX. But now, I think the audience is still going to like it because they're going to find a way to make money off of some little intricacy of it, um, the way that uh, the boys at the option pit teach. So I think they're going to keep trading it. All right, Mr. Flowmaster, since you chimed in, no looking, no cheating. 
Uh, what is your vote? Yes, I never stop. Yes, they lured me back. Or no, I don't trust it. Don't look. You're going to see the results. Or no, I trade. He's cheating. The Flowmaster is cheating right in front of me. Or no, I trade other products. And then B, what do you think our audience is voting for, even though you already saw it? Uh, I'm going to say uh, no, I trade other products. <laughs> How could you possibly come to that conclusion? All right. We'll skip the flow master because he's cheating. <laughs> Instead, Mr. Uh, Rock Lobster, sir, what is your vote? I think I know what your vote is, but what is your vote for the record? And B, what do you think our audience is voting for? Well, 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 well. Let's see here. Um, so is this the one? Uh, sorry. Is this? The, oh, okay. <laughs> Are you dead? Um, I have to say, I'll just say they lured me back. Um, but I'm going to say... People are going to, uh, you know, but our audience was pretty, last time they were pretty, but they did lure me back for the short term. But I'm going to say that the majority of our audience say they lured me back as well, because I, I, as I recall there, we have some sophisticated homies listening to the show. We do. And right now, those sophisticated homies are not loving VXX. I guess they're uh, they're once bitten, twice shy, because nearly 42%, 41.9% saying, no, I trade other products right now. Wow. So they've just moved on from BXX entirely. I get it. I was in that camp last year. Right behind it, 22.6%. We have, no, I don't trust it. So you add those two together, you got about almost six, over 64% of our audience. So closing in on two-thirds saying, nope, they are done with VXX. A number three, yes, they lured me back, 19.4%. And then bringing up the rear, as it should, yes, I never stop, 16.1%. So listeners... Uh, do you have thoughts? Agree, disagree? Get in there. At options is the place to go. You guys know how to find us. You can also hit us up on questions at theoptionsinsider.com. That also works. Just like Gar did this week, Mr. Flowmaster. has a question for you. He says, hi there. Well, hello, Gar. He says, I was listening to the recent episode of the Option Block 1209, Killing the Market with Rwandan Put Spreads. Can I say, by the way, such compelling titles on these shows, you know? Our producers do yeoman's work. And there was a trade alert newsletter mentioned. He says, trade of the day insights. Where can I find this? So, Mr. Flowmaster, it's your newsletter. Gar wants to know where can he get it? Uh, I, I feel a little bit bad. It's, we haven't yet kind of commercialized that and opened it up. But I'll tell you, if you send an email to um, admin at trade-alert.com, I will stick you on the list. And then once we get it into actually a more systematic uh, sign up, uh, I'll transition you over to that. So just send us a note. I'm happy to turn you on. I actually looked at today. It looked like yesterday's best trades were a bunch of Apple book buyers. Mm. We'll see if those are still still killing it today after the bell, listeners. But good question there, Gar, and everyone else who wants to get access to it. Just send it to the admin, Henry, admin at tradealert.com. Admin at trade-alert.com. At trade-alert. Don't forget the dash, Don't listeners. The dash. And then you, too, can be like Gar. You do want to check it out, Gar. It is it is an intriguing newsletter. I will just put it that way. You know, it always is intriguing, listeners. It's what we're keeping an eye on until the Monday episode. So it's time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, listeners, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on. Until our next episode on Monday, let's go out to the uncle of Mike's. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, we'll start with you. What is on your radar until the big Monday OB? Oh, Apple, of course. That's the big one. And then also wanting to see if after the the close, not necessarily today, but the close after tomorrow, if we can hold the 4,500 level in the S&P and maybe use it as a, a launching point for further uh, upside or uh, it's a key number that the market's just going to run right through to the downside uh, or it'll do nothing i'm willing to bet it'll do one of those three things but that's what i'm watching uncle mike always with his fingers right on the pulse of the market mr rock lobster same question for you sir what are you keeping an eye on until the monday episode i have to say so i was just looking at so this is the again since thursday um the uh this is we haven't so the lows of the day have been higher than the previous day for the last five days. Now I know that's kind of like I'm not some you know chart uh, whatever guy, um, but when I look at that I like okay so every day the 
Uh, so so today's low will be higher than the low of yesterday, and it was like that Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Friday, and Thursday. So uh, so we've had five straight days where um, vol- they basically uh, the low of the day uh, was higher than the day before, and and that's just saying like traders still think the market's going to move a little. Now I don't know where. Uh, I wish I did, but for sure it's um, you know, that that's a sign of movement. Now, granted, we came from like a, I think some ten handle volatility or eleven handle volatility at the money, uh, not very long ago. So clearly, with that, we actually moved. The vol's going to stay a little higher, but um, you know, I I think that gives you a little pause. I think people are waiting for Apple earnings. They and the market really wants them to be really good. And I don't know, you know, what they're going to what it's going to be. But um, that's, um, you know, and that's what I'm looking at. So I think if tomorrow, if we make that, if we make a, a lower low than the prior day, I think we've like uh, like Mike said, the fact that the government is spending too much money is not an unknown thing, uh, certainly by anybody that's in the financial market. So. Uh, we'll see how we'll see how big a trouble they're getting us into. And Mr. Flowmaster, last but not least, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until your next appearance next Thursday, sir? Uh, well, I agree. Earnings, uh, there's there's plenty of fireworks out there. We, we have Amazon tonight, also, yes. right? Yes. So um, I think we'll see some interesting stuff there. I was just looking at kind of some of the real outliers. I think Nikola is implying a move of around 35% when they have earnings, I believe, is next week. So, um, oh, no, actually, they're, t- they're tomorrow, tomorrow morning, Nikola. Um, the other thing that I, I'm going to toot my own horn is as we see some of these kind of squeezy things going on, um, I was watching Rite Aid over the last couple of days. That's another one that looks to me to be like a short squeeze. Um, keeping an eye on the borrow rate to, to short the stock, if there's borrow available and what the options imply in terms of the cost to be short shares uh, is a good way to kind of see these situations and 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 understand if it's a crazy hard to borrow or if it's just kind of hard to borrow. And um, we do have that data in two different ways at but We have it in Trade Alert uh, with a borrow command. And then we also have a data set in the data shop called the Borrow Intensity, which is a, a more uh, in, of a fitted data set that's an end of day um, set. So keeping a name on short squeezies and earnings is going to keep me busy. And Mr. Flowmaster, that's going to do it for us here on the show today. Before we go, Mr. Flowmaster, if the people, folks want to be like Gar and reach out to you and check out all the cool stuff you have cooking in the land of all things flow, where should they go? What should they do, sir? Well, that reminds me to warn the people that keep an eye on the emails <laughs> that, that somebody's going to ask for this report that is the trade of the day. Uh, and uh, just SIBO.com slash RMA, which is Risk and Market Analytics, Trade Alert, Live Vol, Silex, FT Options. All of our good platforms are there, um, you know, or feel free to look me up on LinkedIn. There you go. Look them up on LinkedIn, S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. It's not Swartzitron, it's Flowmaster. You got to search for that and then mm-hmm. you will find him. And Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. If folks want to check out the awesome snacking, see that call back to the beginning of the show, the awesome snacking opportunities available at stcharleswealth.com. Where should they go? What should they do, sir? Go to stcharleswealth.com, of course. If you want to set up an appointment to talk with me and have some unhealthy snacks, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, also, follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tussaud, T-O-S-A-W. I am a financial advisor, and I use the option product, and I'm not afraid to say it. Coming back out your way in October for the next leg of Kane County, I'll expect some unhealthy snacks to be waiting for me, sir, when I get out there. Hey, let me know when you're coming. If you, if you let me know, we can figure something out. Yeah, at the very least, some Skippy's delicious gyros and lemonade, sir. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, alas, I am not going to the shores of Maine, but he is there. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, if folks want to check out your offering, where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, optionpit.com, 888 trade call Ted, 10% off anything we do. If you say you heard this show, it's the only time we offer this special, by the way, is just listeners of uh, the Options Insider Radio Network. We have been having grand old fun here now, going on 10 years plus. Um, also, uh, uh, weekly profit cycles for me at, um, uh, money map press. 
for all those interested. If you want to learn VIX and SPY, I actually just closed the SPY put spread. Probably should have closed it this morning, but I better take some money or I'm going to not like myself in the morning. Um, now, oh, and all that. Um, and that's uh, and that's what I got as far as uh, as far as our uh, our offerings at Option Pit. And uh, we are going to be doing some technology upgrades for our students. So look for that coming out soon. There you go. And speaking of coming up, well, Trifo coming up a little bit after its normal time. I am obviously out of the studio, listeners. Take me a little bit to get back. So if you listen in live, we'll be back in a little bit later than our usual time for Twifo. And then after that, for an extra bonus, because we like you folks, we got a pro Q&A coming up later on today with our buddy, Mr. Nick Howard, talking all things futures, options, analytics, and all sorts of fun. So stay tuned for that. Then back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for Ball Views. After that, for all you pro folks over there, for options oddities and then back again on monday another episode of the option block stay safe out there everybody. the option block is brought to you by SIBO. when it comes to trading volatility trust SIBO, the creator of the vix index for in-depth and relevant information SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights analysis and positions of vix options and futures no matter what kind of trader you are there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market visit www.cboe.com slash vix today to learn more you're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>